this episode Guaranteed to get you cold If you didn't know It's that new show Come on and feel the flow We keep you on your toes I'm talking young and old It's the outdoor show Buenas, Zen Huffaday. I'm Chef Peter Duenas, and you're watching The Outdoor Chef. On today's show, I got a special technique that I've developed over the years for catching lobster with rod and reel. Yes, that's right. Hook and line catching lobster. The Outdoor Chef is brought to you by Cars Plus, driven to satisfy. Mescla, Chamorro Fusion Bistro. Remax, JD Power and Associates award winner for the highest customer satisfaction for both home buyers and sellers in 2011. Mescalados, Saggy Fan, Sam Mungi. Tisu Hardware, Hagasa Tisu. pound test leader with a hook as you can see it's just a regular hook and I'm using some fresh octopus and we're gonna drop down here to the edge of the cliff and see if we can catch some lobster okay so now I'm ready to drop my line and because the lobsters kind of shy away from the light we're gonna have to turn off the camera light and go into night vision mode there, I think that'll work better now. So now I'm gonna drop in my line. Got my line in. Got my wife, Monica, right next to me. My lobster fishing partner. She's actually, uh, she's an expert now fishing for lobster with rod and reel. So we had the tag team. We gotta get us enough lobsters to cook up. So. See if we can get one or two or three or four. that pulls the food in the mouth. She hooked it and it broke off the lobster. Uh, my wife hooked on to a lobster and this is like one of the things that you might expect if you're fishing for lobster. And as you can see, it's hooked right on the grabber. So we know they're down there. So all we gotta do is pull them out and not the grabber. But I'll eat this later anyway. Oh, all we can do is re-rig and throw it back out. That's the name of the game. The wife's got another one. It started to come up, but it's holding on to the rocks. Just gotta let it get tired. You can kind of almost feel the lobster struggling to cling on to the rocks and it slowly loses its grip and that's when we reel it in. I just gotta make sure it doesn't pop off. It's the only thing. Yeah. It's on there. There's definitely a lobster on this. Oh. Got him, all right. High five. 
Believe it or not, this is the same one that got away from me the first time. We got his claw, his feeder, so he came back for more. Apparently he couldn't resist the octopus. Now that's what you call it, dumb. <laughs> <laughs> but not we got bad. him. Nice one pound lobster, good size, perfect for eating. Oh man. Now all we got to do? Just get a couple more and we're good to go. Lobster so. dinner. Mahongan action. That one wasn't really fighting as much. But I can't believe it's the same one. Did you know? I kept throwing it right in the same spot, so. filming with an ITME Samsung Galaxy 2 and uh, should be getting some nice coverage. Last catch of the night, we got two nice sized lobster. We actually have a couple of lobster in the freezer from a trip that we took last week and unfortunately the uh, camera wasn't here so we're going to take these two and we're going to take the other two and we're going to cook us up something nice. I got one. Looks like we got us some good dinner tonight. Ooh, thank God I got one. That's what we call sweat tea. This segment was brought to you by Secure Safe Solutions, your security fire, building controls, and integrators with 24 hour alarm service. Tisu Hardware, Hagasat Tisu. Jared Cruz, sous chef at Mesco Restaurant. Uh, Jared, thank you very much for joining us last night on the trip. Thank you for and having also, me. Also, we're gonna do a lobster keleguin, which is not your more common keleguin, but if you have lobster at your disposal, you gotta try it. And then our second item, we're gonna do a lobster toast, which is a spin-off of shrimp toast, uh, a more traditional type of appetizer that dates back uh, who knows when. Uh, we're going to use lobster on that and we're going to serve that with a denancy aioli. So Jared, you're going to help me out? Yes sir. Right on, let's go. Let's do it. Now we're going to remove the tail. Waste vein. 
get the lobster meat out. Sometimes when you're cutting it, you get particles of the shell. You definitely don't want that in your kelly when that's going to hurt your teeth. Now we're going to slice up the lobster meat. And for an extra kick, I'm going to add in one lemoncina. Whenever you're using lemoncina, you want to take out the rind at least on the edge where you're going to be squeezing so that the flavor of the rind does not get into the Kelleguin. Fresh lemon juice, got a little bit of calamansi juice already squeezed. We're going to add some onion, green onion, hot pepper, we're going to add some salt and I'm going to add some lemoncina in here. We're going to juice that, mix it all up nicely. Massage it all in there, get all the flavors evened out. Not pepper in that one. <laughs> <laughs> spicy, spicy, bro. <laughs> you got pepper in that one. Let me try. Seasoning is good. You got enough tang, you got enough salt, you got spice in there. Now we sweeten it up with the good stuff. So we'll put a little bit of this fresh coconut. Okay, so now we're gonna put this on ice and get started on the lobster toast. two lobster tails that Jared's cutting up and we're gonna get this into a farce or like a minced lobster meat and we're gonna work in some onion some scallions and some culantro culantro is a locally farmed uh, cousin of the cilantro they both have the same flavor but culantro is actually uh, has a more intense flavors it's stronger so we're gonna throw some of that in there for a little bit of kick as soon as we get our, our farce mixed, then we're gonna start making our toast. We're gonna make our denancy aioli, and we're gonna start frying up these bad boys. Okay, so now I have some regular white bread, which I've cut up into triangles. I'm gonna put some of this lobster farce onto the toast. Kinda wanna just evenly spread this and you want to press it firmly so the meat sticks to the toast. We have some egg wash here. We're going to dip this in egg wash and we're going to bread them before we fry them. toast is frying I'm gonna make the denancy aioli I have a little bit of Japanese mayo I've got some good denancy that my brother Brian made the other day I'm gonna add that in and we're gonna add some chopped scallions and we're just gonna mix this up now spice is optional so now that we're done with the dishes we're gonna plate up and my favorite part of the show Chow time.
lógica. This segment was brought to you by Secure Safe Solutions, your security fire, building controls, and integrators with 24 hour alarm service. Tisu Hardware, Hagasat Tisu. Welcome back. We're at our final part of the show, my favorite part, chow time. We have our two dishes, we have our lobster keleguin, we have our lobster toast with the spicy denancy aioli, and joining us tonight is my wife Monica, who is my fishing partner and always manages to help me catch these lobsters with rod and reel. Hun, thanks for uh, helping me. That first lobster really uh, made the difference in the show. And towards the tail end, I got mine. So we had two, and we had a couple more from our previous trip. Jarek, who was there with us on our fishing, helped me cook. Jarek, thanks again, man. And uh, let's uh, let's give it a try and tell me what you guys think. I also did some uh, fried tatizas. Gotta have some fried corn tatizas with the Kelvin. Mm. Mm. Super fresh. Mm. How's that shrimp toast? Amazing. <laughs> mm, <and it's> <laughs> Mm. I love the killer good sweet. Mm-hmm. Sweet killer good. Try it out. Pretty good. Excellent. Lobster toast, lobster keleguin, we got to go. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time right here on The Outdoor Chef. Oh, seriously though, it's really good. <laughs>